<clears throat> so for right now, we're going to move on and take a look at another Christina movie. She's going to make her way on up here. Christina, come on down. <laughs> All right. So, what movie did you recommend for us? Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery, the original. I mean, of course, the original remake hasn't come out yet. Yep. I was going to say, that's not out yet. No. Looking forward to it, though. All right. Why did you select Pet Cemetery? Pet Cemetery was a film that my mother forbid me from watching when I was younger, uh, about my daughter's age, because she said it would be too scary for me. And I didn't watch it until. Myself and my cousin, David, actually, who's part of the stream today, um, we were looking for a scary movie to watch, and we're like, eh, what the heck, we'll put this one on. I was probably 23 at the time, and I'll be damned if it didn't still scare me <laughs> as a grown woman. You know, my mom told me to, to wait until I was older, and yeah. it's an older film, so yeah, there's definitely a cheese factor there. Mm -hmm. Um and I have not read the book, so I don't know how true they stayed to Stephen King's uh, book and his story. But well, we'll get into that in a little bit. For right now, let's take a look at the trailer to this. Have you watch it? Give the audience a. I have not seen this. All right. So, uh, you mentioned that uh, you weren't sure how much this deviated from the book. Uh, honestly, I thought that overall this was pretty faithful to it. Um, obviously, the movie didn't include some of the uh, <laughs> obviously it didn't include some of the finer details about things. Um, the introduction to the job, I, I remember that being a pretty colorful uh, thing when he started working as the doctor of the university. Um, but there was one element of it that didn't make it into the movie that I remember from the book, and it was the scariest part of the book to me, and that was the nature of the Wendigo. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was an entity that took that had uh, that existed outside the boundaries. Uh, and I, it's been God, probably two decades since I've read it, um, but I do remember that that was just really, really frightening. And I hear that that element is going to be included in the remake. I'm really excited to see that that one's being remade, honestly. Um, usually when I see that a classic film like that is being remade, I kind of cringe a little bit just because it feels like directors and producers are kind of grasping at straws because they can't think of anything better. Um, this is one that I'm excited for because I want to see what modern special effects and what modern film can bring to a pretty awesome story. And with Stephen King's writings, it's, it's difficult to take some of his stuff and put it to a film adaptation because he is just so damn detailed with what he says and how he says it. And right. I mean, even if you're not a Stephen King fan, you can't deny the man's talent. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm definitely going to be excited to see how they take it with that. Um, and to see, Hopefully, the cheese factor pulled out of some of the acting, especially uh, the little one there, Gage. Yeah, you know he was he was probably just a little bit too young to not cheese it up a little for the films. So. <laughs> yeah, but he delivered one of the creepiest lines ever delivered by a kid. Now I want to play with you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now that was fantastic. Uh, I recently reviewed uh, a pretty terrible movie, Quicksilver Highway. Uh, which was a two-part anthology, uh, one based on a story of Stephen King and the other was based on a story of Clive Barker. And the Stephen King segment was the short uh, that he wrote, Chattering Teeth. Um, and I, I mentioned in my review of that, the fact, you know, exactly what you mentioned, that Stephen King is a really difficult thing to bring to film. Uh, the level of just painful detail sometimes <laughs> that he goes into I think is absolutely necessary for the color of the story. Um, but it's so hard to capture that without winding up in, well, honestly, one thing that I'm really excited by, and I'm surprised we didn't discuss this with the best haunted house uh, discussion is the Netflix special, uh, let, uh, Haunting of Hill House. Uh, yeah. Because now, so now we're getting into a uh, <laughs> thing with streaming services where they're not afraid to do a one-off season. 
give it 13 hours to flesh out a storyline and do it proper justice. And, um, I'm, I'm really excited by that. So, uh, I, I am kind of excited in the future of where Stephen King's adaptations might turn out. Um, I wish that it was given more than two movies. So do I. But, yeah. um, <laughs> especially now that I've actually, you know, at the age of almost 32, I finally dove into reading that book. And right. And it's, it's daunting. I mean, even as a paperback, that book weighs, you know, a metric ton. And, um, I think it's. I think it takes more than two movies. I do. I think it's. It's going to take more than two movies to do it justice. But I'm. I'm going to bite my tongue until I see the second one. Yeah, I think Nick has some input. So is it? So you know, in for me, obviously, with with Stand by Me and the Birth of Castle Rock, mm -hmm. followed by Darabont and his his adaptations of Shawshank and Green Mile. Green Mile. Yeah. Not to mention his his nice pedigree of writing some good stuff in the '80s, like the remake of The Blob, for example, which is which is a really fabulous remake. Creep Show. Uh, creep show. Yep. Uh, my question is: Is Set Pet Cemetery a Castle Rock uh, production, or is it uh, because that usually? You know, I don't know. Usually gives you a little bit of like, oh, Back well, check. they're going to take care of this property. <laughs> you know, they're going to they're they're a great custodian for King's work. So, I want to say let it me, might uh, be, but let me look into that. Because uh, that would, that sort of brings a cachet of uh, for me respectability. You know, like yeah. you know yeah. that they're not going to botch it we're gonna be on camera too here while i look this up because i am awful curious i'm trying to remember from the trailer but, uh, what it says oh, yeah yeah they, they only just recently released the first actual trailer for it yeah. right yeah. imdb would probably have the production company if it's right, listed as castle rock right now. Yep, yeah that's where we are or do you not have it because for some okay, reason I when i pop over my web browser it goes over to camera two Production company, Paramount Pictures. Paramount. Oh, it's Paramount. No, no okay. list of Castle Rock anywhere on there? Laurel Productions. Uh, okay, so it's not their property then. No, it's not a Castle Rock. Yeah, because, I mean, I don't know if I forget who Castle Rock distributes through, but I know they're always listed as the production company. So. Right. All right. Well, that doesn't make me worried, but it would have been nice to see that. It's like an insurance policy. I don't recognize the names <laughs> of the writers for it. I mean... Uh, out of the movies that were no, uh, that young, were made of his stuff, I would say that Pet Cemetery is one of the better ones. Yeah, for sure. We've absolutely seen some dogs in the past. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thinner thought, was kind of eh. Yeah, that one was kind of meh. Yeah, and I, that is one of his books that I did read. But. Some of them, some of them were great though. I mean, they nailed the mist. That they, was they yeah. did. They really did. That was yeah. so but good. I did, I if we're going to talk about the mist without getting into spoilers, we're going to have to at least address the ending. The difference. Yes. Yeah. King has said he prefers the ending. And yeah. I do too. And I know that Jenny, you feel different. No, I don't feel different, but I've watched the mist so many times. And every time I watch the movie, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping it's going to end differently. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, you know, like I don't, you know, I don't want to see King Kong fall off the empire state building, you know, every like time. every yeah. time. And it was just, so disturbing yeah very painful very disturbing and it'll just it, it every time it leaves me shaken up for the rest of the has day. anyone sure, um, started watching the series that they yes. released i started i did, yes. I did but it hasn't long. come back castle rock the series no no, for, uh, no not castle rock, the but, mist. Uh, the mist. oh they, no they... we actually haven't gotten into castle rock yet jenny and i but uh we have seen the mist yeah but it it's just kind of disappeared long, but... it yeah go on i guess Oh. Yeah, I, I don't know if they're going to return for any more seasons past the first one, but I mean, obviously it ended on a cliffhanger, as these things often do. Um, I'm hoping they didn't cancel it. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was kind of, it was an interesting show, not a terribly faithful adaptation. No. But uh, I don't know. Uh, I'd be curious to see where it goes from here. I kind of gave it kind of a average score. Really. No, not that I gave it a score, as <laughs> I tend to. But uh, yeah, it, it was, it was on this side of all right i'm curious about castle rock i think i watched like the first half hour of it and uh I and, and and i got real busy and, and just put a bookmark there but has anybody watched it no not I yet i really really it. want to yeah. i hear phenomenal things about Pretty it good. i was impressed with some quality for yeah. sure the first first episode i've just been too busy to go back and, and catch up okay well uh you have anything to add christina uh yeah so I think one of the most um, tugging things with Pet Cemetery is that it touches upon something that 
just about everybody has felt at one point, which is, you know, the loss of a loved one mm-hmm. and wanting very desperately for them to be back. Right. And it kind of, you know, pokes that bear. Like, you know, if, if you were given that choice, would you really do that? And if that person came back, would they even really be them? Mm-hmm. And I think that's a, a heart wrenching, but a terrifying thing to look at. You know, I've, I've lost, you know, very dear people, my mother being one of them. And, you know, seeing that movie, it definitely makes me think, ah, no, I, I don't think I, I don't think I'd want to turn back the hands of time. I don't think I'd want to play with that level of, uh, reversal well i think that's a i mean that's a common theme in uh, a lot of fiction and well i mean just general thought processes is the whole you can't go home again kind of thing um and i mean it it was such a natural thought that i love that they actually integrated that into the movie when uh fred gwynn like you know he knew that he showed the main character you know about the pet cemetery for the cat then child died not really spoiler it's just the story um but uh fred gwynn immediately I know what you're thinking. Don't, don't do it. it. Yeah. You know, it, it was just, it's the default. Yeah. You lose somebody, you want them back and you're willing to, you know, do anything for that, be it, uh, you know, foolhardy or not. And I, I did love that they explored that to, to the degree that <laughs> Stephen King does. Yeah. yeah he's I good wanted to that. add something. Yeah. Um, for, for those who may be watching things, um, some of us live in Hornell, New York, and Hornell, New York has one of the finest cemeteries I think I've ever seen in terms of yeah. spookiness. Right yes, and of course, the very first time I rode my bike through there and I got to the end, I thought, what the hell is this? There was a pet cemetery beyond the spooky yep. cemetery. But it was, it's a beautiful pet cemetery. It is, but it was an autumn day and it was spooky. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I'm like, and I had just gone to um, another part here in New York, Cuca Lake. There's the town of Hammondsport, and there's this great Salem's Lot church there. It looks just like the church in the Toby Hooper television film. Uh, and uh, so then we went there. My friend Fred and I drove, rode, rode our, our bikes into the cemetery after seeing the Salem's Lot church in, in Hammondsport. And then we're like, oh, my God, this is, this is an unbelievably scary New Orleans-type cemetery. And then we get to the end of it, and then there was a pet cemetery. Mm-hmm. You know, So it was like the Stephen King theme following us all day. And it's beautiful, but it's... That cemetery is unbelievably creepy. You know, I'm like thrilled to live so close to a creepy cemetery. <laughs> it's yeah, not it's, that bad. I can see it from my bedroom it's window. It's, it's not it's, bad. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. It flows up into it. Hornell it doesn't make any sense. It goes up there and it just... And then you start seeing like, ominous. like it, ominous. And, there's, and then sometimes you start to see like uh, a tombstone in a place where you're like sticking out of a hill. And you're like, what the hell? <laughs> like like mm-hmm. it's just, there's just dead people everywhere. As the cemeteries often yeah, we have. started burying them <laughs> vertically. <laughs> <laughs> There's Drop too many in, of yeah. them. <laughs> uh, so, anybody else have anything? Yeah, Pet uh, Cemetery, Stephen King? Oh, it's one of those movies where I like it. I really do. I don't like watching it. It's mm. it's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. Good point. It's, the kid, the cat, the just. At least they didn't show what happened to the cat. No, just, they found it. Well, they don't for the kid either. It's just it's heavily yeah, they wide. Did. No, no, <laughs> no, they no, didn't no, really it show well, it. Did, yeah, it does cut away, but then that leads it to your imagination. Yeah, which I yeah. think That's many times is even scarier. Yeah, because than showing it. it just shows the balloon flowing up in a way. Yeah, your point's well taken. I think it's a great movie. I'm glad I've seen it once or twice. I don't go back to it often. It's, it's really it's, hard. It's a hard flick. It's, it's, yeah. it's not one I will can't, I'll go, you know what? I really feel like Pet Cemetery yeah. today. <laughs> That's you, true. You, you, yeah, I should watch it when you're showing it to a friend who hasn't seen it before. Yeah, we, we watched it in the marathon, and that was great, but I was wait, I was ready for it to be over. It just, it's, yeah, I, I just don't put it in the same category as like, uh, like it's one that, yeah, I'm not going to pick it up on a casual watch level, but at the same time, I'm also not going to actively cringe when somebody wants to watch it with me no like i'm not, I'm not it's not in the same category for me as like antichrist or oh, requiem for a dream those are <laughs> hard movies to yeah. watch yeah requiem i need a bad. couple of years between or my, so. my yeah. 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 so let's not do that again <laughs> they're chores you know they're great movies but they're... yeah all right so that should about do it for pet cemetery and our discussion of it uh thank you christina for joining us here of 